listening to Loving BDSM Podcast, episode 33. Hey everybody, Kayla Lords here. Today, I'm talking about something kind of personal, but that I think affects more than just me. Being unable to keep up with the physical side of kink. Welcome to the Loving BDSM Podcast. If this is your first time listening, glad to have you. If you're back for another week, welcome back. Loving BDSM is produced every Friday for your kinky pleasure and education, and show notes are found at kaylalords.com. Come back often and feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. If you love what you hear, we'd love a good review on iTunes to help other kinksters find us. You can follow me on Twitter, at Kayla Lords, or stalk John Brownstone at southernsirsplace.com. All links are in the show notes. By the way, my new book, Kinky Love Notes, is now out and available at major online retailers, so Amazon, Barnes & Noble, iBooks, Smashwords, All Romance, all that. It's kinky and erotic poetry, specifically with DS in mind, okay? You can read it to get yourself turned on, or read it or copy a passage um, out of the book and send it to your partner to get them turned on. (laughs) The links to purchase are in the show notes. And if you do get a copy, please leave a review wherever you bought it. Good or bad reviews help, okay? A review is like a hug for an author. I firmly believe that. And I love hugs, especially when they're virtual. And I don't have to actually, like, look at anybody. Anyway, (laughs) moving on, let's get into today's show. So I'm going to touch on a sensitive topic today um, about weight and bodies and fitness and health. And I kind of feel the need to put a few disclaimers out there. Okay, so here we go. Here they are. These are my disclaimers. All bodies are beautiful. Even if your body isn't beautiful to me or my body isn't beautiful to you as an individual, in general, if you have a body, that's a beautiful thing. Okay, fat is not inherently bad. Fat is a thing, not an attribute. Calling somebody fat as an insult is awful, says the chick who was called fat most of her life. And being heavy doesn't automatically mean someone is unhealthy. You can be of a, a, an overweight kind of thing and still be healthy. You can be skinny and be really unhealthy, okay? So there's that. Then the next one, this is the one where I usually like piss people off when I say things like this. We should probably all relax a little about the need to look perfect. You know, that idealized picture in your head of that perfect body. And when you get it, life is going to be great. I think we all need to calm down about that because there's no such thing as perfection. And we're all just making ourselves crazy over it. Okay, so those are my disclaimers. Are, Are we clear? I don't think fat people are bad as a former fat chick or a current fat chick, depending on your perspective certainly not a bad thing it doesn't make me a bad person you can be overweight and healthy and trying to be perfect is impossible so can we just all cut that out okay so those are my disclaimers but here's the thing (laughs) so a few truths now some of what we do as kinky people is very physical okay hell even just a little rough sex can get really physical really quick And if you're not in decent shape, no, I don't mean athletic, and like I said, I don't mean skinny, you're either going to have to modify what you do to adjust, which there's nothing wrong with that, you're going to suffer through it and be miserable and it's not going to be a good kinky time, or you're not going to do it at all. And I know in some cases, especially if you're like me, you're like, I'm not going down without a fight, I don't want to have to not do something. But that does happen. Sometimes no matter how good of health we're in or how much we exercise, there's some things we just can't do. Okay, so I, I get that. Now, anybody who's like, modify? What do you mean modify? There's nothing wrong with modifying your kinky fun, okay, so both of you can enjoy it. And I think a lot of us do these things, and maybe we don't even realize it's a modification because we don't call it that. We don't really talk about that much. But I can give you some examples. For me, I'm supposed to kneel at least twice a day, once to give John Brownstone his coffee and once to go to bed. And one of those times is always on the floor. And sometimes it's just not happening, y'all. Okay, kneeling for me isn't always easy. I have bad knees. When I bend my knee, when I flex my leg and I bend my knee, you can actually hear it crunching, okay? So if I have overdone it or I've been on my feet all day or something is going on where my legs hurt and my knees are screaming at me, guess what? I'm not kneeling on the floor. I can't even physically get down there and it's going to hurt and it's potentially going to cause injury. It's not happening. So I'm either kneeling on a pillow or I'm bending forward, you know, at my waist or I'm doing something, but I'm not on my, on my knees on the floor. Okay. We modify that. Now in sex, (laughs) 
John Brownston and I each have our own like personal issues. Um, he's got a bad back, which usually is okay, but if it flares up, first of all, nobody's having sex that night. But even the residual of you know a little bit of back pain, sometimes you're just you're not having sex the way you want to. So we actually have a go-to sexual position. We have sex in the spooning position. I'm what we call the little spoon, and he's the big spoon. And yes, you can have really rough sex that way, and it's really hot, and it's very intimate. But it means that missionary is not something we do very often. Doggy style is not something we do very often. Um, some of the other like positions where you literally have to bend a leg back or bend something back, we're we might try, and we may, every once in a while, if we're feeling really good, do it, but it's not our go-to thing, okay? Spooning is very comfortable, and everybody still gets off, and life is good. So that's how we modify and still have kinky fun. But I'm going to make a confession here and now, and it's something I've mentioned before. <laughs> I've gained a lot of weight over the past two years, and it is something I've discussed in a previous episode, and yes, I'll link to it um, in the show notes, but it's... <sighs> It's a lot of weight, okay? And yes, there is that part of me that looks in the mirror and says, God, I just want to look different. I just don't want to, I don't want this body anymore. And on one level, that's not unique to anybody. And on another level, John Brownstone is like, I think you're beautiful. I don't want you to be a skinny mini because it's not the body type I prefer. And I'm like, good, because I'm physically incapable of being that skinny. These hips are not made for a size two body, okay? Um, but there's that and that I have to sort of battle with all the time but I can kind of get over because I have daddy loving me and helping me see myself through his eyes and that's great but then I'm left with another problem (laughs) I can't do kinky fuckery that I want to do because I'm out of shape and heavier than I've been in a long time and I can't do it as long and I can't do the things I want to do and that's a problem and it makes this particular baby girl kind of pissy okay so what do I mean by that what what oh you can't do what okay well Let's start with rope bondage. It's not something we do very often, but when we do, we're in the mood for it. Let's go. Let's do this. And it's a problem, okay? First of all, there are some positions I can't even get into, okay? Like you've seen in in some of those Shibari pictures, somebody puts their arms behind their back, and then the, the rope is wound and tied, and it's beautiful and intricate. No, my arms do not go behind my back. Now, that's not really weight related, it's flexibility. But it's still being physically fit and and training to be flexible. I'm not flexible enough. And even if I can get into a position, whether it's with my arms or my legs or whatever, I can't hold it for very long. I mean, it's just exhausting and my body hurts and I have to go, please, no, we can't do this anymore. So that's, that's one side. That means we're not even doing things he would like to try or that would be really beautiful and really intimate. When we do get some rope bondage in, we don't spend two or three hours, y'all. It's like 30 to 45 minutes max, and that's from beginning to end with everything in, in the middle, okay? Standing on my feet for 20 minutes is hell. First of all, you have to be still when you're being bound with rope because they have to do their knots and have to get in the right position. But when your feet hurt and they ache, you can't. You kind of can't help it. You got to shift. You got to move. You got to relieve the, the pain. And I that's fine if we were doing it for a couple of hours I'm 20 minutes in and I'm like oh my god my feet hurts but oh my god my back hurts oh my god this is a strain that's not cool y'all not to me it's not a judgment thing it's a thing that like ticks me off because it sh- to me it shouldn't be that way when there are ways to correct it when I should not have let myself get to that point which is how I see it so that's just one issue the next one and y'all are going to laugh at me, but that's okay. I- I'm okay with that. Okay, sex, is, there's some problems here. The, um, spooning, told you about, that's our go-to. I actually like that position. It doesn't matter how tired I am. I It's still good when we have sex that way. But I also love to ride John Brownstone. I may or may not have referred to him as the Italian Stallion a few times. Um, and I know that what that really means, but still, it was, you know, he's Italian and I wanted to ride him like a cowgirl, um, and I can't, okay, but it's good, I love it, if you've never done it, if you've never tried it, you thought, oh, I can't do that, well, if you can't physically, I understand, give me a second, I'll get there, but if you just haven't, because you thought that was weird, oh, no, you have to try it, anybody with a clitoris needs to try this position, because you get friction in a way that, oh, my God, and if you have permission to just sort of come at will, oh, my God, oh, my God, best orgasms ever, okay, so I love that position, I don't want to do it all the time, but when I want to do it, I want to do it, well, guess what? I cannot do it. Not anymore. First of all, he's lost 
30 pounds and is smaller. His frame is smaller than it was before. Now, he had to have dental surgery and have a liquid diet for a month to do it. But hey, he lost 30 pounds. So it should, I don't even have to straddle him as much as I did before. It doesn't matter. My thighs are screaming. They're going, bitch, what are you doing to us? Get down. Okay. That's the first problem. The second is my core. Now, for anybody who doesn't like pay attention to physical fitness that much, more power to you. I feel like I know just enough to be dangerous. But your core isn't just your abs. A lot of people think, oh, I'm working my core today. Well, it's not just your stomach. It's not just your abs. It's kind of your whole torso, front and back, your back, your your entire abdominal wall. It's kind of the thing that holds you upright. Well, when you're on your knees straddling somebody and you want to sit up, it is definitely your core doing it. And my core starts screaming again, bitch, what are you doing? Get down. So I might power through that. <laughs> painful as it is and we start going at it oh yeah this feels good and the hips are grinding and the clits like oh yeah baby keep going and y'all I get winded we're not even going that fast because I even when I was in better shape I wasn't capable of going that fast now I'm winded okay and I'm breathing like somebody's chasing me with a knife (sighs) so that by the end if we make it to the end we usually don't I'm usually like no daddy I can't do this I can't do this anymore spoon me okay I hurt so bad I want to throw up, okay? None of that is sexy, y'all. None of it. Not one bit of it. And if you cannot tell, I'm annoyed by it. And I'm annoyed at myself, but I'm very annoyed by it. So that's another issue where my kinky fuckery has been screwed up by my own weight. Now, here's a more minor issue that maybe some of you can recognize even more. The last time we kind of had rough sex, like... It was all the foreplay was really rough. There was spankings and hair pulling, and he was able to toss me around the bed, even though I officially weigh more than he does now. Oh God, thank God he's strong. Before we were even done, I felt like I was working out, and by the time we were done, it wasn't the normal, like bone melting kind of thing or breathing hard because oh my gosh, you've had this major adrenaline rush, and yeah, you worked hard. It was like somebody took me outside and beat me and not because they love me okay it was miserable I had to recover for two days after that as if I had just been to the gym and worked out really really hard it was just rough sex y'all it was not even on the same level as some of the rougher moments we have had in the past and I was dying and ultimately that's the problem my weight and lack of strength and conditioning and lack of flexibility and just general out of shapeness is interfering with my kinky fuckery. And when that happens, all I could think is, okay, we got to do something about this shit and we got to do something about it now. Now, it's a multi-layered process. You can't just go to the gym and work out and most of us anyway, and have like this great body. It just doesn't work that way. So it is about nutrition and I have started eating healthier. I've done a lot of research and a lot of sort of paying attention to my own body and we are all unique in this and some people all you have to do is cut out, you know, sodas and you lose 20 pounds. I'm not that person. I first of all don't drink soda. Um, For me, I had a little bit of insulin resistance, so it was blood sugar issues and my body hates processed sugar. Like I look at a Coke or a Pepsi and I've gained five pounds. I haven't tasted the damn thing yet and I've gained five pounds. My body's like, "Mm, bitch, no, no sugar for you. But sugar, one, is in everything, and two, it tastes really, really good, especially when you go to Starbucks, so it's it's difficult. So, But I've changed my eating, and that definitely has helped. And I've started working out, because when my motivation was just to like, hit a certain number on the scale or to look like what I saw in the mirror, that wasn't enough motivation for me. I mean, that is for some people, and that's great, but for me, it just didn't push me. Not being able to do my kinky fuckery, that pushed me. So I found this really cool free, we all love free, right? It's a 30 day challenge by a really cool chick who calls herself Betty Rocker. And she's got this great vibe in her videos and on her blog. You just like want to be your friend kind of person. She's got this cool sleeve tattoo all the way down one of her arms. She's cute and fit and wears all these cutesy little clothes. And she's like nothing but muscle. And But she's perky and she calls everybody rock star. And I just like gelled with her I was like yes I like her I don't know her but I like her so her 30-day challenge you sign up for and you sign up for it whenever the hell you want and the next day every day for 30 days you get an email with a link to a 15-minute workout that's it 15 minutes let me tell you in that 15 minutes she kicks your ass I am been doing it two weeks now today the day I'm recording this episode day 14 
I hurt, y'all. I hurt in good ways, though. And that's the thing. The hurt I was feeling in the really bad, <laughs> failed attempts at kinky fuckery was the bad pain. It's where you were pulling something you didn't really mean to. The pain I feel right now was sore muscles and tight muscles, and I didn't know that was a muscle. Those feelings, it's a good pain because it's that I can feel myself getting stronger. And what I like about it is that the workout is never the same thing twice. Every day it comes to my email. What I'm going to do at the end of the 30 days, hell if I know, okay? I don't really know. But I know that in its own way, it's working. I can tell that I'm gaining strength. Um, and even though the scale is stubborn, which it usually is when you start doing things that, that make you gain strength, um, I, can, I think I'm losing inches. It's still kind of early. You know, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, and I don't really want to pull out the tape measure mostly because I'm lazy. Um, but Daddy has said, oh, yeah, I can see a difference. I'm like, where, Daddy, where can you see a difference? And then he smacks my ass, and I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. I like that kind of difference. You know, who, what woman doesn't want that, like, perky lift in her butt thing going on, right? So, but I digress. Now we're talking about my ass. Here's the deal, y'all. I need to believe, and I know I'm not the only one out there who wants to lose weight or get fit, okay? And I know, it, I mean, it's a multi-billion dollar industry in the United States alone. I can't imagine what it's like worldwide. I mean, everybody wants to lose weight for whatever our reasons are, okay? And we have our own reasons. You know, I want us all to love ourselves as we are. You know, it's that body positive thing in my head. I don't want us to t- see like a fat roll and go, God, I suck as a human being, right? Like that, that hurts my heart. But I also know that plenty of people are motivated, motivated by what they see in the mirror or that they believe that if they get the perfect body, they're going to be happy finally. Uh, pro tip, by the way, you will not be happy when you get the quote perfect body. That's one, that's not how happiness works. And two, unknowingly, <laughs> unbeknownst to me, right before I got pregnant with my youngest, so like seven years ago, I had what was for me probably the closest thing to a perfect body I would will ever get. I'm never going to get back there again, but that's okay. And I still wasn't happy. I still, every day I look in the mirror and I saw things that I hated and wanted to change. I was not immediately happier because I got the perfect body. And frankly, at the same time I got the perfect body, I went through personal health. There was nothing happy in that particular situation. So perfect body does not equal happiness, just saying. But whatever your motivations are, whatever is making you go, yes, I'm, I'm going to work out or I'm going to eat right or whatever, it's... They're all important and they're all legit, okay? And right now, my motivations are firmly in the realm of, I want to do the kinky fuckery I like, and I'm kind of pissed that I can't, right? Which (laughs) makes it a little hard to start talking to random people about fitness and health. And in my head, the conversation would go a little like this, okay? So, hey, what's your goal? Why are you letting Betty Rocker kick your ass for 15 minutes a day? What are you, a masochist? And I would say... Uh, actually, yes, I am. I want to get kinky with my daddy who beats my ass and throws me around. Could you imagine <laughs> having that conversation? Right? They would back away or they'd block me online or they'd call the cops. It would not be productive. Now, y'all, I am joking. I do know how to function in the vanilla world. We all do. We know how to not talk about our kink. But I don't know about you. I always feel more myself when I can be with the kinky among us, or just the kink friendly, I mean, you don't have to be kinky as long as you're accepting of kink. That's cool with me, right? Because then I feel like there's this whole part of me I don't have to hide. So I was really motivated. I was pissed off about the kinky fuckery. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go find an online group to join. I'm going to see who's out there that's kind of in the same boat and what they're doing. What? I went looking. uh, I kind of failed miserably. So I went to FetLife, which FetLife, some of us love it. Some of us hate it. I'm firmly in the middle. Sometimes I hate it. Sometimes it's kind of cool. And it's got a lot of groups and a lot of places to learn. And when you find the right people and the right mix of people, it can be a great place to get more information. I'm not going to knock it for that. But we all know the problems with FetLife. You know, dick pics and pick up things and lies. And and that's men and women. That part sucks. So I went to FetLife. And they have some groups for weight loss and kinky people and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And these groups are old. They've been around since Fat Life started. They've got several thousand people. So I'm like, mm, that's kind of too big for me, but let's go see. Maybe it's worth it. Maybe it's, it's great and cool. 
So I read through some of the more active threads, and there wasn't anybody actually offering advice that wasn't that was useful to me personally, but uh, that might not mean anything. So I'm still not getting the good vibe, and I do what I always do when I go to FetLife and I go to a group. I read the rules, partly because I'm type A OCD, and partly because you get a vibe for a place when you read the rules. I knew we had a problem when I read the rule by a moderator that said, don't be an asshole. Like, they have a, a rule that's the don't be an asshole rule. Oh, God, that means it's a problem. If you have to have a rule for it, it's a problem. Or it could potentially be a problem. And they even gave specific examples of what they meant by don't be an asshole. Not just don't judge people because they're not getting fit the way you are. But when they push back against your assholishness, do not respond with, well, I'm just trying to help you live longer and be healthier. And I went, oh, God, this is not the place for me. I'm kind of bogged down in the asshole rule. I need to get out of here. So I went to Facebook. And Facebook didn't have anything. But even if it had, Facebook is problematic for me. Uh, My Kayla Lord's profile got tanked i have my author page i love my author page and you can interact on facebook as your page not your profile but it's a pain in the ass and it's difficult and it's too easy to screw up so i was like oh i can't be on facebook as much as much as i would prefer it this is not going to work either so all the other places there just wasn't a great place except then there was google and google google plus for anybody who's not familiar with it actually has its uses it gets kind of derided because oh it tried to be facebook and it's not facebook well it's not really trying to be facebook not to me and it is great for groups it's awesome for groups i'm part of bdsm groups and erotic author groups and all these groups but again i didn't really find one that had anything to do with fitness and kink together so i created my own (laughs) and let me just interrupt myself anybody goes well that's lovely but i'm not i can't do google if you have a gmail email address you have access to pretty much everything google offers okay if you do not it takes like 30 seconds to get a gmail email address so i'm just putting that out there so anyway i created a group on google called fit 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 for kink because i figured that whatever else our goals might be we'd all probably like to be in better shape for more kinky fuckery i cannot be the only one out there in the kinky world who's like i'm pissed because my blobbiness is preventing my kinky fuckery right like i can't be the only one i just refuse to believe that so in my head i'm sort of envisioning a space where people come kinky people or the kink friendly and kink accepting people come together where we motivate each other and share stories of what we're doing and what works and what doesn't and ask questions and my big ass hairy goal slash dream is to get kink friendly or kink kinky if that's even better fitness and health professionals to join in so that we can actually ask specific questions and potentially get answers that are rooted in science and not just well i tried this one thing this one time and i didn't die from it i mean how many times have we offered that advice when somebody said so what'd you do to lose 10 pounds well i drank a can of vinegar you know i mean come on so uh, that's kind of what i'm thinking and i'm thinking it could be cool and it could be awesome and you know wouldn't it be nice to talk to a professional and say hey i'm having this problem with this rope bondage team where my arms go behind my back what exercises can i do to gain flexibility in my upper body and you can tell them exactly what you're trying to do wouldn't that be awesome so that's that's like the big end goal right now i just want to get people in it to let's talk and let's motivate one another let's share what we're doing and yay but I also recognize I might just be dreaming. <laughs> I mean, maybe me and like the three or four other people who've already joined. Hi, I'm waving to you if you're listening. Um, and God, I really did just wave. Um, maybe it's just us. But I don't really think so. Because the one thing that's common among all of us, regardless of whether we're kink or vanilla. And there's a lot of commonalities between kink and vanilla. I mean, we all recognize this. But one of the biggest ones is that we're all trying to lose weight or get stronger or fit into whatever item of clothing that's tucked away at the back of your closet and i won't mention that you know it's floor length and beautiful blue and trimmed with creamy macrame kind not macrame lacy kind of stuff did i really say macrame good god i'm tired but anyway and it's beautiful and it makes your tits look good and it'd be great for a date night and you haven't worn it in three years but you know maybe maybe we're not all working towards that goal either whatever anyway (laughs) we all i don't care what flavor your sex is or what flavor your lifestyle is we all seem to have 
ultimately this desire to look better or weigh less or be stronger, be more flexible. And so I just thought that maybe if we all come together for support and motivation and to share those ideas or to ask those questions, then we could all have more of the kind of kinky fuckery we can't maybe do now because we're not flexible or strong or in good shape yet. Yet. I'm ever optimistic. So if you're interested, it's a Google group. You go to Google Plus, you click on communities, you do a search. It's called Fit for Kink. Don't worry, I will have a link in the show notes page too. Um, you do have to be approved to enter the group. I'm trying to keep it like a safe space for everybody. Um, no, it's not a pickup place for your next Dom or Sub, okay? If you meet somebody in the group and you hit it off, great. Take the flirtatious, meaty, hey, will you be my bitch kind of thing to a different place. This is not, that's not what this is for. And pictures are allowed. I mean, you can show your face if you want. I would hope everybody in a kinky group would respect kinky privacy but you can show muscles that are getting strong you can show hey look what i you know i can bend my leg behind my neck now you know whatever that's cool but no dick pussy or boob pics okay this is not the space for that unless you are willing to admit in a closed group on the internet that your dick is smaller than it used to be well then you know because you lost weight you go ahead you post that pic because that's what i'm gonna assume Anyway, I don't mean to, like, bash dick pics. Dick pics can actually be really good, but I just want to put it out there. That that's not the space. This is not the space for this, okay? And I will say, um, in all seriousness, vulva size can actually not be an issue, like, like, ooh, it's a problem, but there are those of us out there who kind of look at our vulva and go, ooh, does it really have to be this big? Is it Can, can I lose weight here? Anyway, I'm still not going to show you a picture of that. Just putting, okay, there's just some things. I'm, that's what Tumblr's for, y'all. Anyway, <laughs> so we all have to find the thing that motivates us, right, to get in shape or to lose weight or to eat healthier. And some of us don't want to get motivated. Or we're not motivated. We don't think we need to. And maybe we don't. Maybe you're in perfect shape and you're already doing your thing and it's just part of your lifestyle. And that's awesome. I'm like it in total awe of you. Um, But some of us do want to lose weight or we do want to get stronger. We do want to be more flexible. We want all those things. And we are all motivated by different things. And for me, the moment I changed my mindset from a lose X amount of pounds to I want to be stronger and fitter for kink, it was almost easy to get started. And so I want to create a space that helps people do that too you know whatever your motivations are or if you know you need to and you're just not quite motivated yet maybe being around other people who understand what you're going through will help you find your motivation but i just want to create a space where we can all get in better shape for our kinky fuckery and so if you want that too come join us on google we will be there um give me like at least a few hours to get you approved if you do kind of sign up because I kind of check out your profile and I try and figure out do I know you do are you scary Woo! and sometimes you know I have a life and I'm not like right there doing stuff on my phone so but if you're interested come join us um more kinky fuckery for everybody yay that's the goal okay y'all I'm done ranting about kinky fuckery um I hope somebody's keeping count of how many times I actually said that in this particular episode (laughs) I don't know if John Brownson will be joining me next week. It's a possibility. We have kind of a couple of big topics we want to talk about. Um, But if not, it'll be me again. So just remember, y'all, keep it kinky, and we'll see you next week.